Thank you, Mobile, for partnering with me on this video. So here we have the PlayStation edition of the Backbone 1 controller. I actually reviewed the original Backbone 1 here on the channel last year, but when I saw this new one get released, I really wanted to try it out as I thought this design looked super clean. Functionality-wise, it's identical, so if you already own a Backbone, unless you really like this new design, there's no need to upgrade whatsoever. It's compatible with all iPhones so long as they're running at least iOS 15. I'm using the 13 Pro with no issues at all, but it will also work fine with the Pro Max as well as the entire 14 lineup. For the 13 Pro or later though, you need to make sure to attach this adapter because because without it, the camera bump is going to be up against the back plastic. With this controller, I've mostly used it for PS Remote Play and Steam Link, so that's what I'm going to center this review around. However, this will work exactly like any other controller, so if you're playing App Store games, it'll function just the same. The build quality is pretty solid, while this is a very lightweight design, it doesn't feel cheap. It's made of plastic throughout, and the buttons have an almost identical texture to the ones found in the actual DualSense controller. It has the same white color as well, which I think looks a lot better than the original all black design. On the back side, when it's fully extended, there's a PlayStation logo, which is a really nice added touch. All the buttons look great, but the joysticks are in change, which for me is a big con, though I'll touch on that more in a minute. But what I do love about this thing is just how compact it is. It stretches out far enough to fit any phone, and then can be stored away easily when not in use. It doesn't completely fold up, but I find just being able to chuck it into a bag good enough. It turns your phone into basically a handheld PS5, and you don't have to worry about propping up your phone and using a separate controller. Setup is super easy. Once you pull it open, you just need to plug in your phone, and then it's ready to use. Not having to worry about charging is super convenient, and it barely draws any battery from your phone. Luckily though, there is a lightning pass through so you can still charge your phone while playing. You even get a headphone jack, which I think is super clutch as you can use the same headset that you play with on your PS5 if you want. For buttons, we obviously have the X, circle, square, and triangle, which as I mentioned looks super good and feel just like the DualSense ones. Only difference is that they are a bit smaller, but it's crazy how well they were able to replicate them here. I was honestly expecting it to just be the same matte plastic with just a different color. With this, aside from the Backbone app and PS Remote Play, every other game is going to recognize this as just any other Xbox like controller, so it's going to show you those hints instead of the PlayStation ones, which I find a little annoying. The D pad is surprisingly really nice, and the glossy texture feels really great to press in. Underneath it is this button with three dots, which in remote play acts as the share button. Pressing it once will pull up the share menu, or you can hold it to take a quick screenshot. The button to the right acts like a share button for your phone. By pressing it once, it opens up this menu where you can start recording your gameplay straight to the Backbone app, or you can hold it down to take a screenshot into your camera roll. Looking at the other side of the controller, this button with the three lines acts just as the start button. Next to it is the orange backbone button, which if you press once will bring you right to the backbone app, but when in remote play, holding it down for a second will function like pressing the PlayStation button once. On the other hand, holding it down for two or more seconds is like holding down the button to take you back to the home screen. At the top of the controller, we have L1 and R1, as well as L2 and R2. It's nice having actual triggers rather than just a button, so this works really nicely for racing games as you have a linear response to your presses. Now, onto the joysticks, the first issue I have with them is that this is branded a PlayStation controller, yet the joystick configuration is still set up just like any other Xbox controller. For someone like me who has the muscle memory from PS4 and PS5, it is a little annoying. The joysticks themselves are the same ones found on the original Backbone, and personally, I found them just to be way too small for my liking. I have average or maybe slightly above average sized hands, and find that they're just not that comfortable to use. Because of their size, they don't move around very far, and I feel the need in most games to turn down the sensitivity to the lowest level for it to feel natural. Otherwise, I find that I just turn way too fast. One upside though is the joysticks actually click, so you can use the L3 and R3 functions in games. This is something not seen on all mobile controllers, unfortunately. Now, I get why the joysticks and controller itself are this size, because it's meant to be very compact and easy to throw on the side of your phone. It's just a little convenient and feels too small in my hands. It's not one-to-one -to, -one to a traditional game controller, and I have trouble finding a comfortable position to play in for long periods of time. I really hope at some point we'll see a Backbone Max or Pro that's a little larger in size that I think would make the whole experience of using this a ton better. A lot of the time I'd honestly prefer to use an actual DualSense, but I can't deny the convenience of this. Just being able to chill on the couch, in your bed, in the car, wherever you are, and still have access to all your games so easily is crazy. Speaking of accessing your games, one way you can do it is through the Backbone app. Now this is actually one of the things I love the most about the Backbone compared to using any other controller because it makes it feel like you have your own gaming console right on your phone. You can navigate with the controller or by touch, and even when the controller is not connected, it still allows you to browse the app and find new games to play. On the main screen, you have this really clean UI where you can scroll through and look at the games you have, see which ones are popular at the moment, find new ones to play in specific genres, look at the free options, there's a ton here. Just like an actual console, you can add friends and join parties. It's really a great app, but it is completely optional. 
optional. You can obviously still load up apps manually and use the controller just like usual. Do note that while you get a free year of the Backbone Plus subscription, which gives you access to this app, after that's up, you have to pay $50 a year for essentially just the launcher. Anyone who had a Backbone before this service came out and signed up for an account does have a lifetime subscription, but it's crazy that on a $99 controller, they expect you to pay that much for their app. Moving on, talking about actual gameplay, remote play works shockingly well with the PS5. I highly recommend connecting the PlayStation to your router with Ethernet, as this did give a noticeable improvement to the latency and overall smoothness. Playing over Wi-Fi feels really good and almost like you're playing on the actual console, though it's still not quite there. This won't be great for competitive multiplayer games like Warzone, but if your internet connection is good enough, it's definitely worth a shot. I think that where this is going to really shine is for casual single player games. They run very well and to have access to them wherever you are is super nice. To make sure you're all ready to use remote play, go into the PlayStation settings, then hit system and go to remote play. Make sure enable remote play is switched on and if you haven't already, hit link device and type in the code in the remote play app on your phone. If you go into the power saving settings, then hit features available in rest mode, turning on stay connected and enable turning on PS5 from network will allow you to put the PlayStation into rest mode at home. Then wherever you are, when you load the remote play app, you can power it on without having to have left on the console. It's also possible to play remotely over cellular data and to do this in the remote play app, go to settings, then mobile data and make sure you switch on use mobile data. Depending on how good your service is, you can still get a pretty good experience playing, though in my testing, there's a little more input lag and slightly worse picture quality, but games were definitely playable. Mint Mobile, who are partnering with me on the video today, hooked me up with their unlimited plan, which for a very low price, was able to play games over remote play while I'm away from home. With how much money I spend on games, the last thing I want to do is drop even more on my mobile data, and luckily, Mint has plans for as low as just 15 bucks a month without sacrificing your coverage. Switching is super easy, it's done completely online, and you can get a digital eSIM so you can activate immediately without leaving your house. I was able to add Mint along with my previous carrier super easily and it took me less than 5 minutes. But if your phone isn't eSIM compatible, that's not a problem at all because they'll ship out a new SIM card for you free of charge. All of Mint's mobile plans include unlimited talk and text, as well as 5G and a free mobile hotspot so you won't have issues gaming on the go. They'll show you how much data you're using every month and recommend plans that'll save you money. Through January 15th, if you purchase a 3 month plan, you'll get an additional 3 months free using my link mintmobile.com slash coal which is in the video description. You can use this offer with all of their plans, including the unlimited one, so if you're sick of paying too much for your service, check out Mint Mobile and save big today. Another app I found to work great with Backbone is Steam Link, which allows you to remote play any game from your PC. Obviously, you're able to stream anything from your Steam library, but if you add a non-Steam game on the desktop app, you can play any other game from Epic, Game Pass, etc. Similar to PS Remote Play, I recommend you use Ethernet on your PC and play over Wi-Fi, as so long as your connection is strong enough, there's very low latency. I still think it's best suited for single player casual games, but Modern Warfare 2 didn't feel all that bad. I've honestly been real impressed with just how well Steam Link worked. You will get the occasional lag spike and reduced picture quality, but overall, it's something I can definitely recommend trying. But wrapping up, I am a really big fan of this Backbone 1 controller. The PlayStation branding is super sleek, and the white color looks so much better than the original black design. Its $99 price tag is a little steep, but you are getting a quality product, though the $50 Backbone Plus subscription is not at all worth it in my opinion. The compact design is super convenient, but I still find the controller itself is too small for my hands and can be a little uncomfortable for longer periods of gameplay. I really hope we can see this along with the joysticks be improved upon in the future, but until then, I think this is worth checking out for those of you who want to be able to play PS5 while on the go. With that, I've been Cole, and I appreciate you all for watching. I'll catch you in the next one, but until then, take care.